I'm moving pretty slow today. I had one of those days where you wake up and you're like, do I have to? I don't want to get out of bed. Case in point, it's 1.44 and this is my second coffee of the day. I just couldn't do it. But I got a lot done yesterday, so that's why I'm allowed to take it slow today. On the plate today, I should say on the stove, I'm going to make a spaghetti squash casserole. And this is like meal prep because uh, mi suegra last night brought over chili colorado. So we're going to have that for dinner tonight. I just have to make rice to go with it. Uh, but in the meantime, my plan was to make spaghetti squash casserole. And now I'm just going to freeze it. It's going to be for next week. Or not, you know, whenever we run out of chili colorado. But um, I like to show this. This is how I freeze it. It's like a little loaf pan. I found it at Ross. I got in a four pack. And I just wrap it in foil and then wrap it in plastic and write what it is in a day on it. And then when it's time to eat, you defrost it. You can take the plastic off and fling it in the oven. Boom! It's a perfect amount for two people. So, ooh, let me see, I already have enchilada casserole waiting. There's two of those, so we're gonna eat those first and then onto this. But in the meantime, I think I'm just gonna store it in a Tupperware or find some other container, I don't know. Who cares? I'm gonna make it. Moral of the story, I'm gonna make the food. <sighs> I've started by um, cutting the squash in half and cooking it. Spaghetti squash, large one. No one wants to see me cut a squash in half. It's very unsafe. I do not use the best method. I basically take this knife and murder jam it into the squash and then like force it. I should be wrapping a towel around stuff. I'm not. Somehow I still have all my fingers. Usually I make Papa do this, but I forgot to ask him to do it yesterday. Um, then I put each half face down on a plate, cover it in plastic wrap, stick it in the microwave, 10 minutes. 10 minutes per half. And then I just let it sit on the plate with the plastic wrap still on until it's cool enough to turn into spaghetti. And I'm using both halves, I don't know if I mentioned that. This is a super easy recipe, it's something that I cook a lot because we like spaghetti squash. You can do it any flavor. I'm making it like spaghetti flavor today. Um, basically, you have this spaghetti squash, you mix it with some st stuff, and then you toss it in the oven. Uh, I'm adding cheese, but aside from that, oh, and meat, sausage. Um, it can be vegan. It can be vegetarian. It would be whatever you want. But cheese is just really good when it's melty. Um, <laughs> so I'm adding cheese. Deal with it. But mostly it's just veg. It's a little bit of meat and cheese, um, por sabors, but it's a good way to chalk your body full of veg and also feel like you're eating something that's kind of unhealthy at the same time. So with that, let's get started. I also have my um, teacup full of white cheddar Cheez-Its. No, okay, anyway. These are off-brand white cheddar Cheez-Its that I found at Walmart. <laughs> and I freaking love white cheddar Cheez-Its. I was so stoked to find an off-brand that was like very cheap. And honestly, it's about um, woo, salty cheesiness. It's not so much about does it taste like white cheddar. Try not to be so struggle bus with my phone today too. So hopefully that works out. But I turned the Wi-Fi off. So maybe I won't get a phone call or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So hopefully I don't get a phone call. Um, I have hot pork sausage. I'm heating up the pan. You heard me turn the stove on. I'm a terrible YouTube cook. I just do whatever I want. Actually, I'm a fantastic cook. I'm not so good at explaining what I'm doing and I never ever use a recipe. Yesterday I used a recipe and I was very proud of myself because I mostly follow the recipe. At least I didn't add anything that wasn't in the recipe. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna heat up the pan. The pan is dry. It's okay that it's dry because my pan's not gross, um, AKA nonstick. 
And I'm just gonna cook the meats in the pan and then we're gonna add onion after I chop it. So yesterday was a bank holiday for a foolish reason, for a man no one cares to celebrate anymore. There we go. But my husband had the day off, just excite. So um, typically on Sundays, he always has the day off. I have the day off, we have it together. We have one day off a week. We go to estate sales, we already did that. Yesterday was Monday, so there were no estate sales. He had the day off. Instead, we went to the ReStore, the Habitat for Humanity ReStore, um, which is a place we try to go like pretty frequently because they have some cool stuff there. Can you even see me? Am I even? Yeah, I'm on camera. Um, and we went at like 10 a.m., which is when they open. We didn't even realize like the first people there. Her. Um, I it kind of made me anxious being the first people there, but whatever. Uh, I roll up, and he's looking for some. I didn't even really want to go. I was just like, whatever, it's fine. Um, oh, maybe I should add oil to the pan. No, oil's gonna be created from the sausage. I don't need to add oil. It's just a hot ass pan, so I'm getting scared, but it's fine. It'll be fine. You can't see me, but I'm cutting a sausage loaf in the chunks. I'm going to cook it like it's ground meat, basically, because that's what it is. Okay, okay, I'm going to add some oil. Don't at me for not adding oil at first. There we go. That's like a teaspoon. It's like none. I'm not dumping out any juice, so... And you want to add a lot of oil. So anyway, we go to the restore. He goes to look at whatever he's looking at. I think it's like stain or something. And I go to furniture because that's always my first spot. And I spot something we've been looking for for quite a while. And so I just stand there like looking at it. Onion rolling at you. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at this thing like, is this really happening? $64 for a dining room table and four chairs. That's so cheap. $65, I should say. Uh, and it's like the right size. It's not that ugly. Most importantly, the table is solid wood. So it's not garbage furniture like the last time I spent $60 at the restore on this like crappy particle board hutch, but I really needed a hutch. Um, so yeah, we've got a dining room table, which is super exciting. We have not had one in years at our old house. Oh my God, why is it so hot? I put it, I thought, on the less hot burner. Listen, gas is hot. Um, at our old house, the dining area was like, the floor was slanted. So if you sat on it, you felt weird, off kilter. And so we never used it. We just stored shit in that room. Called it the nook, because that's what it was. It was a breakfast nook. It was super cute, but really it just had like the dog's bed. It had nothing in there. And like some canned food. Sorry, you're gonna hear me smack that spoon against the pot a lot. Um, so yeah, we were able to like sit down and eat a meal facing each other instead of not on the couch for the first time in years last night and that was pretty awesome and then of course immediately my mind goes to like what seasonal linens can I buy for this thing because we both determine it needs a tablecloth like of course so we went to Ross last night and we found one it's okay it's not my favorite but it works or actually two we got one autumnal one it's not my favorite and then one that we can just use on the daily it's fine I felt like it was important to start off with two so that we can wash one too. Uh, but that's like one of my favorite things to buy as a homeowner or just a person. You don't have to be a homeowner, in fact, just like a, a bougie lady, maybe. 
I don't know if that's even the right word for it. Person who cares about their space is um, things like hand towels, linens, you know, sheets. Um, our sheet situation is pretty much under control. I try not to buy new sheets all the time because I will. I freaking love sheets. New sheets. Oh my God, it's the best feeling. But ours are really cute right now. So I don't really need that. Um, and then I'm always on the hunt for hand towels, like more thin options I can use in my bathroom. Uh, and then, you know, we have two bathrooms, a normal bath and a half bath. Um, like I said, mine is Femme. And if there was like a Christmas tree that's pink or something, you know? Um, but it's, it's fall time, so I was looking for something like spooky cute for my bathroom. Any kind of spooky for the kitchen. Actually, the same colors as the kitchen. So red, blue, gray for spooky times. And then something we could use on our new dining room table. I struck out. I found nothing. We got something for the table that's autumnal. It's leaves. It's just fine. It's good. But it's orange. And that's not really the colors we're using. So, whatever. It's fine. First world problems. Then my new tablecloth doesn't match my decor. Ooh, there's that coffee. Making me burp. I think I'm gonna get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm deciding if I need a bowl to put my oignon in. So I can dump it on in there. But I think I do want that. So. I'm gonna have to switch to water. Mm. Um, on Sunday, there were only two estate sales to hit up. Um, and near them was a restore we hadn't really been to yet, a newer one. So we went there also in between, but well, we just, we went there. And um, it was really big and they had like clothes and stuff. The one we go to is mostly just furniture and homewares and uh, by restore, I mean the Habitat for Humanity store. So people volunteer there. You donate your old house stuff. Um, it goes to other cheapos like me. It's basically a thrift store for your house. It's so cool. Um, and we find a lot of good stuff there and we've purchased a lot of things there that have been, ooh, I got onion eye. Very helpful to our renovation process. We're not rolling in it like some people. We're just doing our best. But this big restore was super cool. Um, and I was able to score a bunch of picture frames, which is something we also needed. Um, I forgot to check like the color code discount system. So a lot of them were like 50 cents, which is nuts. I mostly went for frames, glass frames, like with pieces of glass in them already. I got one that's like a weird crappy piece of plastic, but it's such a beautiful frame, I couldn't say no. Um, so that's exciting too because we have so much art to hang and to frame and that we want to put up and I'm just so sick of buying shit from Ikea like Ikea is great I love it don't get me wrong but they don't make the frames I love anymore that were just glass frameless frames you know they were just glass sheets held together with clips they were called clips frames oh, I love them they were so cheap and looked so good with a variety of different stuff. And when you have a lot of them, sorry, you could do whatever you wanted. Ooh, I have to rinse my eyes. Hold up. Hold on, let me get some 
sausage smoke in my eye. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Maybe this will help. Um, yeah, I really like to use those frames for things that were weird shapes because, um, I don't know, I just felt like it looked really clean and really good in a frame without a border. All right, my sausage is in crumbles now. Large-ish crumbles. I'm just breaking it apart as it cooks. Um, and I think it's about time for the onions. I'm gonna add those. I want the onions to cook down a lot, which is why I add them so early. I feel like um. You can't overcook onions. They go away, boo hoo. But they release a lot of liquid, which helps the other stuff cook. You want to cook some of that off, you want to concentrate it down. I feel like it helps release the sausage flavor from the pan. Anyway, onions, I love them. I use them a lot because they're cheap and they're good. And when you cook the life out of them, they're delicious. Raw onions, not so much. Don't want to join that party. Not so into raw onions, but I understand there's a time and a place for everything. I actually brought myself a, I wrote out what to do. Okay. Right now I'm telling myself to add the kale, but I think it's too early for that. I don't think it's done enough yet. I'm going to let that cook for a while, and I think I'm going to open up this can of olives. Here we go. So yeah, I'm feeling um, very, like this weekend was very very accomplished weekend for our home. Sorry, my tenses are all over the place right there. Yeah, I just feel like we got a lot of important stuff done that we've been trying to do for a while. Having a dining room table is like amazing. It feels so good. drain those olives real quick. Uh, yeah, now I feel like I can have um, people over for dinner, which is nice because clearly I love to cook. It'll seat four comfortably or six uncomfortably. <laughs> and I'm also pretty excited about um, enlisting helpers with baking tasks. I'll only say that because I do like to do that. I like to bake, but um, I usually take on these tasks that are like quite laborious, and then I have to do it all myself, and then that's not it's not my favorite. Speaking of baking tasks, I had some bananas that were getting mushy, so I had to turn them into something, um, and so I mixed them with a can of pumpkin. Okay, where did you? And I used some of it for, it had a skin on it. I used some of it for chia pudding. I made like pumpkin pie flavored chia pudding. And then I used the rest of it for that age old Pinterest classic of substituting all the wet stuff in a box cake mix for a can of pumpkin. I don't know if anyone else has made that, but basically you just mix together a can of pumpkin and a box of cake mix and it turns out delicious. So I did that, pumpkin and banana, mushed banana mixed together, mixed with like a, like a butter pecan, ultra moist box cake. It was good. I added uh, roasted chopped almonds too. And on the top, because let's be real, this is a cupcake, it's not a muffin. Pinterest is like, it's a muffin. No, that's cake mix, it's very sweet. And in mine, heavily artificially flavored. In fact, uh, Carlos has a coworker who's allergic to nuts, so it's just second nature now. Whenever I bake something, he's like, is there nuts in that? And I said, well, it's pecan flavor. 
so I want to say yes and then I looked at the box and I was like no nuts it's like how bacos are vegan I still put nuts in it because he wasn't taking any to work but then on top I put um, oats and thick crystal sugar and it was really good oh the sun decided to come up today I have my plants in front of the patio door just in case the sun wants to touch them. There are two plants that I think could really benefit from some sunbeams. And one of mine, I don't know where I got that. I think I got it from Home Depot. And that kind of explains things. It's not doing so hot. But I say that every time a plant <laughs> loses some leaves or the leaves start to get old. <laughs> it's dying. No, this is normal. Plants lose leaves because new leaves grow. But it scares me every time. Oh, my wrist and finger. Higher. Good thing I don't have much more to cut. Um, same with my croton. I have a croton. It had these two beautiful red leaves. It's kind of a mushy olive. Yikes. What have I done? That one's okay. Okay, we're good. I don't even think... Eh, I do need this. Let me rinse it. So I get a treat, which is a sip. I'm so sorry. And I'm so tired today, you guys. I wish I was funnier. You can't be full of it every day, right? You gotta be tired sometime. I'm almost done, so I'm just gonna chug this. Mmm. Yum. And yes, that is what I consider chugging, is taking a sip and then swishing it around and then swallowing it. This is why I can't. <coughs> Whoa. Chug beer. I'm not an alcoholic. I can't. Bubbles? Oh my god. It takes me three times as long to swallow. I don't drink things with bubbles because I don't know how to burp. Fun fact about me. Let me get out of the sunbeam. Ugh. I'm not wearing sunscreen. This is much better lighting, actually. Much softer. Um, I should use this moment as an opportunity to stir my cooking foods. I will do that. I also should add garlic, but I don't need to add that right now. It's going to cook for a long time, so garlic doesn't need to go in right away. My meat, believe it or not, is not yet cooked. I did turn the stove down because it's freaking nuts. I might turn it up a little bit. Basically, the goal is to cook the onions until they're mostly translucent and maybe a little bit brown. And the, the juice and steam and yums from the onion loosens up any sort of um, sausage that may be stuck to the bottom of the pan, which it's doing quite nicely. But it's still not quite um, brown enough for me. Okay. Trying not to smack this bean. Um, I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean my area just a little bit. Welcome to the wipe cast where I wipe off my cutting surface with a paper towel, which is highly ineffective. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. I don't know if you can see that. Did everyone else see that uh, meme of the lady sitting in the chair with the two balloons attached to it so it looked like a butt teaching the children how to wipe? I loved that. Ow. I just smacked the top of my hand with the lid of the garbage can. There we go. She's clean. Okay. Still have to cut garlic. Still not sure if I'm going to do that. Get my life back in order here. Cool. 
priorities. Snack, water. My hands are clean still, they smell like apples. By the way, welcome to my Corel. Um, I know I talked about this last week. I can't see it. I don't know. This cup, I'm like, what do I need these cups for? I drink way more coffee than that. And I don't really drink tea. And I have 12 of those. Maybe 13, 11, actually, 11. I was like, so I took one out to the garage and tried to drill a hole in it with my ceramic bit. Did not work. I put a dent, I think I'm about a third of the way through one coffee cup. Honestly, I just wanted to drill a hole in it so I could put succulents in it. Use it as a planter. That's not gonna happen for me. Well, eventually it will. I figured out, it hurt my hand. I drilled until my hand started to hurt from the drilled vibrations and then I was like, nope. So I think I'll just come out every couple of weeks and like, mm -hmm. life is too short, I'm not doing that. <laughs> at least not all at once. I want this food to hurry up and cook too so I can um, go to Maystopia. I did a lot of good work on it Saturday, maybe Sunday, I forget. Papa took a big long nap and I was in Maystopia the whole time. And I'm working on some cool stuff. So um, I wanna go see it. I wanna go work on it. All right. Oop, it's starting to look good. Every time I stir it, I break up the meat a little bit. Chunks are cool. I'm into chunks. But bite size. So you can have a meat chunk and like something else on a fork at the same time. Okay. I keep seeing stuff outside. It's not the squirrel. It's not back. I've been seeing it since last week when it interrupted my stream in such a delightful way. I sent it out in the yard. Just doing squirrel things, being cute. I think I am going to chop the garlic now. Just to get it out of the way. I don't know what all I'm going to add to this. Squash. I have a bunch of kale. That. I was going to maybe add some frozen veg. I don't think I need to. I think between this bag of kale and the two whole onions, it's a pretty big squash and we're freezing it, so I don't need to make a ton. Before I get garlic in, let me eat a couple more crackers. But yeah, the teacup is a perfect um, cracker dispense system. It's exactly the right amount of crackers. Who's testing me? is like sometimes you just eat crackers inside. Okay. I don't want to cut this garlic. I'm always whining about cutting garlic. This has been the mood all day. Procrastination. I'm not doing what I need to do. I'm just cut garlic. That I'd rather just stare off into space and eat crackers, but that's a mood. Also, no, you can't see it. I have this plant that I think is dying and I need to figure out how to revive it. But it has kind of an offensive name, so I don't really want to Google it. I'll figure that out. This is so good. Endorsement here for the, um, off-brand white cheddar Cheez-Its. Yeah, at least the Walmart ones, they're good. Yeah, I went to Walmart, so see me. I'm poor. I didn't buy any Minecraft stuff. They had like a Halloween diamond pickaxe. I wanted that so bad. They had the children's socks, like the ones I've recently purchased uh, uh, from Terje. Oh, my hip. Mm. Anyway, these have a creeper on them. 
Um, I got two packs of the Minecraft ones and I got one pack of the Pikachu ones or Pokemon. It fit me so well. Which I'm surprised because I have a huge foot. Definitely not a child sized foot. But so I was like, I want all the socks now. And there was really cute Pikachu ones. These ones were actually like black and white Pikachu pattern. So cute. Didn't get them. Don't need them. Same with, there was like all this stuff I didn't understand, like Paw Patrol and Shopkins. Like, I don't have a kid. I don't know what that stuff means. But the socks were really cute. And then there was like a full body fleece creeper suit with the zip, with the hood. Come on. I didn't get that. It would have been skin tight. It would have been like sexual creeper. It would have been hilarious. Didn't buy that. There was a Pikachu one. Again, I like that more but they were sold out of the size that might have fit me. So it's like, no, don't buy this crap. Don't get any of it. You're a grown woman. I also almost got Minecraft long underwear. So I held it up to Carlos was like, do I do these? And he's like, no. <sighs> he was right. I was trying to purchase my feelings. I don't know. I've been having some feelings. I've been feeling very shoppy. That's not good. It's like, I'm kind of a way of self-sabotage to just buy myself crap. I have a mortgage to pay. Instead of buying a tumnal tablecloth they don't even like. Oh my god. I should have um, labeled the stream as mental health. <laughs> Alright, I think I think our onions are cooked enough to add Calais. That's a big old bag. So, um, oh God, are you washed? Oh, triple wash. Bless. I don't feel like washing this. Ooh, this is nice scale. It's shredded. That's going to cook easily. Sometimes you get kale in a bag and it's like whole leaves, which is great. That's fine too. Oh my God. Just sprinkling it all over the burner. <laughs> yeah, but it's really hard to cook. So I'm just going to work that in. That's like half the bag. Um, last night I cooked sag feta from the Bon Appetit recipe and it was the same thing of like sprinkle in a third of the bag of spinach at a time because it won't fit. Um, spinach is a little bit easier I feel like because it's a leaf. It's a whole leaf. Whereas this shred kale as much as I like it I feel like I just showered the whole stove with it. But in a good way, you know. I just found a giant stem. I'm gonna take that stem out. You are not invited. This pan is barely big enough to contain what the rock is cooking. So I think that's perfect. So the kale will wilt down. There we go, it's already starting. Okay, okay, okay. It's almost time to add the other half of the bag. First, water break. What an attractive angle. Hmm. Okay, hydrate for life. Oh, I kind of immediately have a stomach ache. That's not good. Calm down on the crackers, dude. <sighs> okay. I'm going to add the whole bag. I am that maniac. I haven't even added the fourth yet. Let me get out a bowl to put all this in. Oh my god. Ugh. This is my butt. I hope not. Are you looking at my bum? That's the wrong bowl. Ugh. Oh, there's point right at the camera right now. Cheeky bunkies, bum lookers. Alright. Uh, this kale is going to take a while to wilt because there's a lot of it and the pan is appropriate. It's just going to take a while. I'm going to try to not spill it. It's not happening. Oh, come back, come back. I guess I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Instead of eating new crackers, I'm just going to pick the cracker out of my teeth for a while. <laughs> I know that's really attractive. Have fun watching that. 
explains why I have zero viewers. No one wants to watch me stare off into space and then pick the crackers out of my teeth with my own cum. All right, we're getting somewhere. Kale's getting small. Okay, I'll let that cook while I shred the squirge. I've been letting this sit ever since it cooked. Just probably like an hour ago I did that. I know there's a specific way to shred it so that the shreds get longer, but I always forget. I think it's this way, long way. Yeah, that makes sense because the shreds go like that. So if you do this, you get longer shreds. This is rad. Usually I don't wait enough time and my squash is like boiling hot and I'm burning my hand while I'm doing this. Not today. I cooked my squash early. It's actually like one of the first things I did today. I made coffee, I cut my squash, I cooked it. But I have been doing a lot of goofing off today, like I said, so. I made coffee, I put the cutting board down, and then I goofed off for 10 minutes. I got the knife out, and then I goofed off for 10 minutes. Why is there a thread in there? Get out. Hey. Hey. This isn't thread casserole. Okay. Oh my god, no, it's under my nail. Really trying to be part of my recipe. I feel like I saw... No, okay. So yeah, it's my, it's my Sunday, you guys. I just feel like... <sighs> not doing anything for a long time. Okay. Honestly, I probably could have used two squash. This is making quite a bit of spaghetti, but I could I could have. I don't need to. It's not necessary. In fact, I think by the time I get the second squash, I'm going to feel much better about the situation. Why is this taking so long to cook? Get small. Ugh. You just want to go to Maystopia. Okay, turn it up a little bit more. And how about we add... Almost the whole bag is in. Almost. Okay, let me get my second squash half. Actually put that plate in the giveaway pile and I fished it out this morning when I realized I was cooking squash not realizing squash will fit on the new plates this this has been I've kept these plates around solely for microwaving squash <laughs> spaghetti squash because they're so square and wide and they just fit the squash nicely um, so at first I was like, oh no, I can't want my squash plants. And I was like, oh yeah, I haven't given them away yet. They're just in the pile. And then ding, 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 just use your new plate, Ningus. They work just fine. Oh, I don't know if this is um, proper squash removal technique, but this is what I do. I kind of do it around the edge, lift it up. I see a hair dangling off of my sweater. That's why my hair is up, is so I don't get hairs in the food, but I'm kind of notorious for getting hairs in the food, so. I'm really trying here. All right, there we go. I didn't break up the squash very much because I'm gonna mix all of this stuff in the pan with the squash, and that's why it's a casserole, because then you just take that mixture and put it into a dish and bake it with cheese and breadcrumbs on top, boom. You could honestly fill this squash half and bake that if you wanted to be like rustic, but then your squash half kind of breaks down and it's hard to not have squash skin in every bite. <laughs> or it just like, I don't know, falls apart. It's not edible, so why would you do that? Oh my God, I'm spilling kale everywhere. Her burner is clean. I swear. 
about picking the kale out of the burger. Um, I was watching this woman on YouTube, or no, yeah, yeah, YouTube, who's making um, salad, like meal prepping salad greens for her family for the week. And I watched her like chop everything on a, I think a wooden surface, much like this. Let me put this away, excuse me. Um, and all the bits that had fallen out of the bowl or the cutting board or whatever, she just kind of like sweeped. No, they were on the cutting board. Chop, chop, chop lettuce. Swooping the little bits into her salad bowl. And I was kind of like... And as I'm making that horrified face while watching it, she's not looking at me. She's on the TV, mind you. She goes, don't worry, my counter's really clean. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe. And then the next video of hers I watch, she puts a fucking dog on the counter. <laughs> Which, I'm going to admit, I have done before. I've put the dog on this counter, but I'm also not, like, sweeping the stuff off of it into my food bowl. And I'm sure she cleaned the counter between the two videos. I don't know what chronological order, but... A great way to make me not trust your cooking skills is to show me you putting a dog on your counter. Unless you're Jenna Marbles. And then I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> I don't know why. That was so gross to me. I have no clue. Again, I think because I was watching her eat off the counter, I'm not used to seeing people do that. Like, I'll, I'll, if I dropped a cracker on this counter, I would still eat it. Um, but that's a personal choice, you know? I'm subjecting myself to the counter germs. It's my own cracker, it's my own mouth, it's my own bite. I'm not about to feed my whole family. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Maybe that's just me being a jerk. I don't know. Uh, my husband's very weird about chicken juice. So I understand everyone has a foible. Uh, there are times when I'm like, dude, I know there's raw meat around, but like, it's okay. I'm not poisoning you. Sometimes it's irritating. So I'm sure in her family, her kids were like, mom, can you stop feeding us food from the dog counter? And she's irritated by that. Who knows? All right, so I have the whole bag of kale in the pot. It just barely fits. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the lid on. Boom, all right. So the lid is on the kale. I'm trying to think what else I'm gonna do here. Oh, I have a recipe. Let me check off what I've done. It's not quite a recipe, it's just the order in which you do stuff. So, saute sausage, boom. Cut onion, boom. Add to meat, boom. Add kale, boom. Cut olives, boom. Oh, I gotta cut the cheese, bruh. That's what's up next. Duh, don't forget your cheese. So I'm gonna bring back the bowl I had onions in. Let's move this first. So I bought myself a brick of mozzarella. Now this is not classy mozzarella by any means. It's not real. It's from Walmart. So this is some fake ass mozzarella right here. Oh my God, did I really? There we go. When you cut right under the seal. Oh, so irritating. Ugh. Why? That's what I get for shopping at Walmart. I'm gonna use the whole block of cheese. It's, it's a pound of cheese. Yeah, whatever. It's actually not that much, considering how much cheese people usually eat in this pantry. It ain't that bad. Um, so my goal with this is to cut it into like cubes and then bake it and you have a bite and you're like, oh snap, there's this gooey string of cheese that you fork into and are delighted by. So that's my goal. Um, let me get my knife. I'm thinking if I were going to truly cube it, I would cut it that way, but I don't want to do that. So. I'm just going to cut some big old chunks.
I wish I had a funny story to tell you. I'm racking my brain. Not really. Sorry. Um, actually, let's do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I managed to cut that really equally. Wow. This is the last chopping I have to do, right? Yep. For this recipe, ooh, it's gonna be thick. I'm gonna make those a little bit thinner. Those last chunks were pretty thick. As I proceeded, just make them as thick as I want. Whoops. This is about the same size that I want the meat chunks in the pan to be. Very not vegan. With the meat and the cheese. Big fat chunks. God, I kind of. Should I have cut those in half? The bigger ones I will. How about that? The big boys. That's a big boy. <laughs> this is not very efficient. Not efficient cooking. Cut your cheese, but then pick out the big boys. All right, that's enough. I think this way we're going to have better variety. And by variety, I mean bite variety. I belong to the Dan Pashman school of um, cooking fussiness in like he really thinks about the order in which you make a sandwich, you know? And I agree, that's something you need to think about because it's important, it's very important. Oh, garlic! Yeah, I'll add some garlic, okay. So cheese, here, let me, here's what I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, the kale has wilted beautifully. I think this garlic is not not okay anymore. There we go. This looks better. There we go. I'm gonna, ooh. I'm gonna do this. Yes, I am showering my kitchen floor with garlic skins. It's my prerogative. garbage can is open. It really stinks. We bought garbage bags from Winko last time we went there instead of the typical Target garbage bags I get. And they suck. They, like I was about to say, they stink. They smell okay. They're garlic flavor or, oh my God, lavender flavor. Like I prefer, but um, they don't stay put in our garbage can for some reason. They like get all loose and Come out the back side. I thought all garbage cans were pretty much the same size, so very confused as to why that's happening. Um, and so just trying to use them, not not you know, garbage can garbage bags are not cheap. So I'm not trying to use them exorbitantly, but like get these out of my house. We've already replaced them, we've bought new ones, which are also not my blessed target lavender garbage bags. So we'll see if those work. We'll see. <sighs> I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. All right. That didn't happen. Everyone else seems okay. Cut off the 
her heads, by hands, heads I mean, stems. I'm tired. That's a gross bit, okay. Now I really don't care, so I'm just gonna roughly chop these. Also, this is gonna cook in the oven for a long time, so it doesn't need to be chopped small. If in fact, if it's chopped small, it'll probably get burnt tasting or be too strong. But the more you chop it, the stronger garlic gets. Can you just be flat? Thank you. It smells really good. Just hope. I mean, I like fresh chopped garlic smell. I don't like it when it's sitting on your hands. hot stuff. Like I said, the kale is finally fully wilted down. The onions are soft, a little bit brown, not too brown. There's barely any liquid in the pan, which is great. So that means I was justified in adding just a smidge of oil. So nobody sticks. Now I'm going to add the garlic and let that cook for just a couple minutes. You'll notice I haven't added salt yet. I kind of feel like I'm going to do that later when I'm at the, the big metal bowl stage of things. All right, let's get this out of here. People are probably like horrified that I'm doing that to my knife. All right, turn your hands off. Is this cutting board? All right. And I'll mix in the garlic. Um, since it's hot sausage, I'm not any, I'm not adding any pepper flakes. Normally, that's absolutely something I would add. I love hot pepper flakes. In fact, I'm, let's be real, I might still add them. So I just want the garlic to kind of start. To it's not a big thing. I'm going to lit it. Just keep that all the liquid in. Oh, you know what else I, I almost forgot? Sauce. Gotta add some spaghetti sauce. Oh, God. What? I like a glass jar because then I can use it to store stuff in later. And I couldn't find one. I the gross out. It looked appealing. I got this Newman's own. Tomato basil. Um, again, to keep it simple, I'm just going to dump this sucker in the stuff that I'm cooking. And because I'm cheap, cheap, this is water from the kettle. It's not really hot anymore. It's a little bit hot. I just maybe kind of swirl it around so it makes the sauce go away. It's like a half cup at most of water. But um, since we're gonna oven this, we're gonna casserole it, it's fine if the stuff is a little bit soupy because it's gonna cook in the oven. There we go. Look at that. That's like pretty saucy. I didn't even get all of it off the top. Cheap person trick, add water. To get all the sauce out of your jar, especially oh God, the jars. This is why I like glass jars, is because they're just like straight usually. There's all these weird ribs in here. It would have been really hard to take a spoon and scrape that out. It's barely empty enough for my liking, but we'll live with it. I have this dumb jar. Can I recycle this? I guess I can. I've got a one on it. I don't know. This is very upsetting, Newman. Newman! Very upsetting. I prefer a jar that I can reuse and then recycle. All right, so I'm just mixing this spaghetti sauce in. Um, like I said at the start, you could make this any flavor you want. 
In fact, when I first told Carlos I was thinking about making spaghetti squash casserole, he said, what flavor profile? It's like spaghetti. Because normally that is not my answer. Normally it's like, I'm going to make a um, pan-Asian saute. He's like, whatever. Sure. And it always turns, it turns out fine. It's good. Actually, usually I'm trying to turn stuff to like taco flavor. And he's all, can you not please? I don't like that. But I'm a white lady. I love taco flavor. And by taco flavor, I mean like ground meat, uh, white people tacos. So Taco Bell flavor. All right. I think I'm done. Right? Garlic is in. Here, let me refer to my thing. Hold on. Add sauce. Boom. Cube cheese. Boom. I haven't added the olives. I'm not going to add frozen veg, so let's cross that out. String squash into lard. Both done. Mix with sauce, cheese, put in a pan, label, and freeze. Boom! So I just have to add the last two things, mix it all up, put in pans or Tupperwares. I'm very excited. That was pretty easy. Pretty, pretty easy. And no one called me to get a whole string. All right, I'm going to turn the stove off. Let me see if I can lift this. Ooh, it's hot. She hot. Take the fork out, room and spoon, because I will hurt myself. This is what I've cooked. Yum! I know it looks like puke, but it's it's gonna be really good, okay? Once it's got a top on it, it's gonna be delicious. So yeah, it's just sauteed veg. Um, I'm gonna mix that into my big pot with the spaghetti squash. We're gonna stir it all up. I'm gonna put in tufts. Maybe I should find tufts right now, actually. Or like, I meant to find baking dishes before, but I wasn't really gonna show this part. Like, who wants to watch me utilize a baking dish? I feel like I have some of the, oh, they don't care. Huh. All right. Like I said, I had four of those little loaf pans. Those are only two, so I know there's two more somewhere. I just don't know where they are. Um, I think I'll show the mix. God, I keep thinking there's a squirrel outside. There's no squirrel. I'm going to show the mix process. And just know that after that, you do what you want with it. Either you cook it, so you'd throw it into an oiled baking dish with breadcrumbs and cheese on top. Or just breadcrumbs. I'm going to use breadcrumbs and cheese. More um, shred mozzarella is what I'm planning on putting on top. I'm gonna freeze it. If you're planning on freezing it, here's what you would do. So that's if you just wanna bake it. Oven, 350, what, whatever you like to bake. It doesn't matter, it's already cooked, pretty much. You're just trying to get it to be melty and delicious and have a crust. So um, you would mix that, put it in your baking dish, like I said, oil baking dish uh, with whatever the hell you want on top, be it breadcrumbs and cheese, or um, I think this would also be really good with crushed potato chips on top. One of my favorite things to put on top of a tuna fish casserole, which I do not cook unless Carlos is on tour because he hates tuna fish. So look forward to that. Next time he goes on tour, you heard it from me, I will cook for you on stream my dad's delicious tuna fish casserole. I love casserole. Um, so I'm planning on freezing this. If you were going to store it or if you were going to make this throughout the week, this is certainly, as you can see, from my giant, like, this is a large saute pan, and I still haven't added the cubed cheese or the can of olives sliced in half, or the spaghetti squash, whole spaghetti squash, cooked and spaghetti. I would say that's six to eight meals, if not ten, just depending on how much y'all eat in my family. If there is some sort of cheesy, crusty casserole, we eat the whole dish in one night. So I like to use, God, I wonder if that dish is nearby. Oh, here we go. Sorry, there's a cutting board on top of it. Cling, cling. I do this, which is, doesn't say, uh, oh, oh, it's a five and a half by seven by three.
corning where they give ish. We use that one. Or loud can a cutting board be? Okay, here's its sibling. This is a four by one by, no. It's a one quart, so it says A1B on the bottom. This one has measurement. I never, I've never looked at the bottom before. Yep, this is P4B. This is for range and microwave. Try not to have a cracked lid. I don't ever use the lids because those are all cracked. Yeah, this one just says a quart. I think they're pretty much both the same size, but this one is nice if you want more crusty crust, which is probably what I would do with this. And then this one is nice if you have something, like you could plop a couple stuffed peppers in here. Oh, that would be so good. And then the top would get crusty and the peppers would get soft because the bottoms would be down there, you know, can't see me. Oh my God, sorry, cling clang, sorry. Anyway, I'm teaching you about a casserole dish. Here's your thing, casserole dish. What is that? Where's it? Oh, it's an onion piece. Um, yeah, you'd bake this in the oven uncovered with your deliciousness on top. Or you could freeze this whole dish, which I don't really like to do because then my dish is gone. So I would freeze it in, or I would, um, oh my God, if I were going to eat this throughout the week, I would put it in a Tupperware and I would load this casserole as we were cooking. So I would have the cooked stuff together in the fridge. We take it out of the fridge. I'd put it in the greased casserole, sprinkle my goodies on top, put it in the oven. Dinner is served once it's done. Um, but since I'm going to freeze it, I gotta find those little pans. So anyway, that's what you that's the ending process of this meal. That's the death process of the meal. <laughs> Is that only funny to me? I love to rival. That it's not even a joke. He's having death process. I'm like, oh, death process. No one understands what I'm talking about. Okay. So I'm gonna dump my foods, which has cooled slightly because I've gone on a rant. I'm going to dump them into this large bowl and try not to spill it everywhere. This is actually quite heavy, this dish, for me at least. So here's my spoon, okay, a wooden utensil. Watch and lol as I make a huge mess. Oh, no, okay, we're doing good. <laughs> Plop. Yum, delicious. Oh, I only spilled a little bit. Hold on. Let me get this last onion. That made my face hot. Facial. So I, but gift with purchase, you get a steam facial. Oh, I dropped some on the floor. I'm going to have to wipe that up before the dog eats it because there's garlic. She can't have garlic or onions. Those are not foods for dogs. All right, I've made just, just a little bit of a mess. Semi mess. Hold on, let me, let's get this stuff up first. That. I know I should not be using a paper towel, but whatever. Oh, that was an onion. And there's the skin. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my hands really quick. Okay. So I don't know if you can see the steam. I think you can see the steam coming off of that. It's still pretty warm, so I'm not gonna put the cheese in just yet, but I will do the olives. So it's just a whole can of olives. I don't want the cheese to melt at all. But this is it. You just, you're stirring it together like you're tossing a salad. You just want everything to be homogenous. So since you haven't really broken up your spaghetti, those are in a big chunk at the bottom. Ooh. I feel like this is this is not good content. This is not entertaining content, watching me stir. But you know what also wasn't entertaining content? Watching me stare off into space and eat crackers. So this isn't about you, this is about me. This is about what feels good for me to do. I actually started live streaming um, 
a little bit as therapy because <laughs> uh, I, I like to talk. I don't know. I got a lot going on and people are always like, you're funny. Like just last week, one of my coworkers was like, you should have a podcast. And I was like, girl, just watch me cook stuff on YouTube. I can't have a podcast. There's, there can't be, this is enough of a topic. It's like fling food everywhere. <laughs> Cooking is, is the topic that I can be on, and then I just have to go from there. I can't. But um, my hairdresser and I did have this really brilliant idea for a podcast where, because <laughs> we do this anyway when I get my hair done, is we just talk shit about the people walking down the street that we can see out the window. Because he works on a very, like, hip street, you know. And um, we've, I was born here. He's lived here a long time. So we're justified in talking shit about people. Street is notorious for tech bros and like people who just moved here and tourists and stuff. And that's that's fine, you know. Well, not the tech bros. People who just move here with millions of dollars. I'm like, oh my god, it's so cheap to live here. It it used to be cheap. It's not anymore. Anyway. Rant over. Um I just thought it would be really funny to have a podcast. Is my nose dripping? It feels like it's dripping. Where um you don't see us, he's just doing my hair, there's just a camera pointed out the window. <laughs> And you see us just doing what we normally do, which a guy walks by who may be a hipster, maybe a hobo. We can't tell him. We're like, oh, there's your boyfriend. <laughs> Here comes your boyfriend, which is always a funny joke. Always a good joke. All right. This is pretty homogenous, I would say. It still looks disgusting. And it's still a little hot to be adding the cheese, but I mean, it's time. It's time to go. This bowl is toasty, you can see. Um, this bowl, by the way, from Ikea is like probably one of the greatest investments into my life I've ever made. This is my favorite salad bowl. <laughs> like if I can have a salad that's this big and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm happy. That's me in my happy place eating a, a giant salad. Okay, it's cheese time. So because these are pretty thick chunks of cheese, um, I'm not too concerned with them melting in the bowl. Um, but I'm just gonna get them mixed in really quick. Like I'm not trying to push my luck here. I just want them in the bowl. Since the bowl is hot, the food is hot, it, it'll melt a little bit, but hopefully it'll keep its QB shape. And I'll still get what I'm going for, which is pockets of cheese in our delicious roasty toasty casserole. All right, and that's it, pretty much. Boom, so from here you would cook it. I'm not doing that, so I'm not cooking it. Um, I just have to find receptacles to freeze it in. And then I'm going to Maystopia. Oh God, I have all this stuff I'm supposed to do today too. Like, I told myself I would clean the bathroom. That hasn't happened. I don't feel like it. I'm having a hard day. I'm actually not. It's like my day off and I'm doing whatever the hell I want. So I just don't know what I'm complaining about. Okay. I got to find a home for all this food. Thank you for joining me as I cooked this giant bowl of casserole, which will turn into a dishes of casserole eventually. Um, I hope everyone's having a great week. Forgot to add salt. I kind of don't need to, I'm going to have, this is the, at the later date that I decided I would add salt. I'm only doing this because of the sheer amount of vegetables. Onions, spaghetti squash, and kale are the main components in this meal. So those things are not very flavorful unless they are well salted. Um, I think I've mentioned this before. I use diamond crystal kosher salt, so it looks like I'm adding a lot, but I'm really not. It's very mild flavor. It's not super salty. I watch a woman who I love, I love, on YouTube cook and stuff, but she always uses pickling salt, and that scares the living bejeebus out of me because that stuff is salty. Whew. So I can't with that. All right, that's enough. It's mixed in. It'll get more mixed as I, like, pot it. Okay, there we go. I'm really glad I didn't forget salt. I forget something every week, and it would have been so embarrassing.
to forget something so basic. But I'm adding a lot of cheese and there's the salt from the um, sausage and the olives. So I, I didn't want to go too crazy with it. I think I did just the right amount. Okay, perf, there we go. There's our bowl, big bowl of food. Now I'm gonna wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I'm really tired. Sorry. That is funny when I'm tired. But I still have a couple chores I have to get done. And um, then I can chill out for the rest of my Sunday. Yeah, I hope everyone has a great week. I'll see you next time. I think next time might be when I make myself a birthday cake. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, eventually I'll take y'all to Maystopia too. I haven't been there in a while because I've been doing such cool things on it, but, um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, anyway, love you. Mean it. Thank you for watching my cookie. Bye.